If you are a breastfeeding mama and you are asking yourself, am I making enough milk? Chances are that yes, absolutely, you are making enough milk. But sometimes breastfeeding does not always get off to a smooth start and issues start to come up and you start to get concerned about your milk supply or whether or not your baby is getting enough. I'm going to share with you some tips to troubleshoot and increase your milk supply. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the Nourish Muslima. I am so excited that you're here today with me. My name is Halima. I am a doula. I am a lactation counselor, a pre and postnatal nutrition expert, and a mother of twins. So even though we know breast is best, it is hard to know what to do when it's not working. Having been a breastfeeding mom myself, I breastfed two little ones at the same time. Also working with lots of different moms i know that there are concerns that come up with breast milk supply issues in the few days of the life of a baby baby would show a lot of signs to you that would signal you that he or she is getting enough or not and one of the cues or the signs uh, if the baby looks too sleepy and he's not tired but he, he feels too sleepy then that means the baby is not getting enough food the baby doesn't have enough energy for him or her to wake up and be active so he or she is preserving their energy also if your breast is not getting enough signal to make a lot of milk that means you are not putting the baby to feed frequently and that is an issue frequency of feed determines supply of milk if you are removing milk you are putting the baby to feed then your milk supply would automatically increase so are you doing that newborn needs to feed at least 8 to 12 times a day don't put your baby on a schedule and feed them every three hours or every four hours that is putting the baby on a schedule feed the baby per supply and demand when your baby shows feeding cues put the baby to feed don't wait until three hours is up before you feed the baby even if your baby feeds one hour earlier and an hour later the baby is showing some feeding cues put the baby to breast allow the baby to feed that would help to increase your milk supply a lot of people would say to also pay attention to the output of their urine but in the few days of life the output of the urine is not a good factor to know whether you are making enough or whether the baby is getting enough one because when babies are born they have a lot of fluids to come out from their body so if you take their urine to be a factor of determining whether or not you are making enough milk or whether or not the baby is getting enough that would not be ideal because in the first few days the baby is excreting all the fluid from birth are really the fluid from the breast milk he or she is getting they are in the special circumstances and they have a lot of fluid to pee out the frequency of feeds is a huge factor of whether or not you are making enough milk so let's take it like this so the breast is a restaurant it's actually like a kitchen that makes food for your baby so if nobody is home you don't have anybody regularly home and nobody is there to eat the food in the fridge there's probably no need for you to be making food or to be preparing food every day for somebody not to eat it right but if there is somebody home like you are always home or you have extra people in your house that means you would end up making a lot of food at least every two days or at least every week you batch cook for enough food to be available for everybody to get and feed themselves so it's the same thing that happens with a baby and your breast so your breast is like the kitchen if you don't get the baby to your breast for the baby to eat the food so the baby is the person in the house so if the baby is not eating the food every day, then there's no need for the breast to make any milk. But if the baby is constantly snuggled around the breast and the baby is sucking the breast, feeding frequently and adequately, then the breast, that's the kitchen, and the hormones in your body will be signaled by your brain to produce more food for the baby to feed on. You make breast milk, I removing breast milk so if you don't remove your milk if you do not put the baby to breast if the baby is not even breastfeeding you have to pump 
if you are not pumping enough, that means you are not making enough milk, period. You make breast milk by demand and supply. So demand is the baby is demanding, the baby is there, he's demanding to be fed. And when you feed the baby, then there is more breast milk. But if the baby is demanding, it's showing some feeding cues and you are not really recognizing the feeding cues. You don't really know what your baby's feeding cues are and you are not frequently putting your baby to feed, then there wouldn't be supply. So you have to put the baby on the breast frequently and do not put your baby on a schedule. Stop watching the clock, but instead look at your baby. One of the signs that your baby is getting enough milk is by pooping regularly and also peeing regularly. If your baby is pooping regularly, having a wet diaper, about four to six wet diapers a day in the early days of his life or her life, that means the baby is getting enough. So there's no need for concern. But if the baby is not pooping and he, he is not peeing, then that means there is something that you have to troubleshoot and find out if the baby is latching properly for milk to be removed the way it's supposed to be removed. And that brings me to my next tip. Is your latch good enough? Make sure your baby is latched properly. Your baby's mouth is wide open and it's not only at the tip of your nipple. Your baby's mouth is really grabbing the 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 breast the tip of the nipple with the areola the black area surrounding the tip of the nipple so the baby is opening his mouth or her mouth like this and is grabbing the whole part the whole black part like that so if the baby is doing this that means it's a good latch but if the baby is only at the tip where the nipple is that is not a good latch and there's no way your body would be signaled that the there is a customer at the restaurant. So the, the restaurant needs to produce enough food for the customer to eat. So the baby would be just like, um, it's just sipping, not really suckling. Okay. It's just sipping at the tip of the mouth. You have to make sure that you don't have any latch issue. One way to know that you don't have any latch issue is to hear if the baby is actually swallowing. So yeah, sometimes if the baby is not a really, really like newborn baby, you can hear the baby swallowing like that. Okay. But if the baby is not swallowing, you would hear that the baby is that is not good. So you make sure that the baby is swallowing. And then also when the baby is on your breast, make sure the baby's mouth is wide open. Okay. Mm. His mouth is wide open and he's going to just grab the breast like a wild fish and then feed on it. But if that is not what is going on, then there's a large issue. You want to check and find out if, I mean, how you can troubleshoot that and inshallah i'm gonna make a video about how to get a good latch very soon so watch out for that if the latch is not good enough if the baby is not being latched on the breast properly chances are that the baby is not sucking properly so if the baby is not sucking properly then there's no signal that goes to the brain and to your body for your body to produce enough milk for your baby to be able to suck. So if the baby is not latched properly, there's no milk that is being produced because there's no signal. Even though your baby is at the breast, but the baby is not removing the milk. As far as your baby is removing the milk, that means there is demand for milk and your body is going to supply the milk by producing more. But if your baby is not sucking, is not removing the milk, then your milk is going to remain in your breast and your body is not going to produce anything for the ne next feed or the future feeds. So my next tip is to make sure you are nourishing your body enough. You are getting enough calories and you are eating nutrient dense foods. 
If anything, nutrition is the biggest thing you can control for your milk supply. Just eat properly. If you cannot control nutrition, then that is also a problem. I want you to think of it like this. The fact that your body is creating milk, is producing milk for your baby, your body will need nutrition and calorie to produce the milk that is being produced. And that means the quality of the milk and also the quantity of the milk. If you are not able to fuel your body and nourish your body with the good food and nutrient dense food, then that would be an issue for your milk supply. Are you fueling your body to have the building blocks to create the milk? Dieting is a big no-no when you are a breastfeeding mom. Stop worrying about the extra weight you put on whilst pregnant. Feed the baby for the baby to also put on some weight. And did you know breastfeeding does help to burn up to 500 calories a day? That is a whole full meal of the day. So if you are having three meals a day, better start having four or five meals a day because if you are breastfeeding, you're gonna burn one meal a day. So if you are eating about three meals a day and you burn one meal a day, that means you only have two meals for the day for your body to use as fuel, for your body to use as building blocks for your body, and then also to make milk for your baby and sustain you. A lot of people who go to the gym don't even burn 500 calories at a goal in a day. Your body is working really hard to make food for your baby. Your baby's brain, your baby's tissue, your baby's bones, cartilages, and the whole body really, whilst helping you to lose weight at the same time. And if that is not amazing, I don't know what is. And the thing is when you are pregnant, your body favors your embryo, that is your baby, your unborn baby, in the womb. And a lot of the nutrients that your body has stored or your body is replenishing through the food that you eat is being favored for the baby. So a lot of the nutrients will go to the baby first before coming to you, especially some of the nutrients that support bone health and a lot of the fat that is in our body. They go straight to the baby are being favored for the baby instead of you. However, when the baby comes out, your body favors you instead of the breast milk that would feed the baby. So if you are not eating enough, you are not nourishing your body with the nutrients that your body needs to sustain yourself and then make the milk that is quality for your baby, then your baby is going to be getting the scraps of the nutrients that you eat instead of the actual nutrients that he gets from the food that you eat. This is why nutrition during pregnancy and postpartum is wildly important. Remember to always choose food first approach. So it is always food first. You make sure you fill your body with the real whole food before going on to other galactogogs. Galactogogs are ingredients of food products that are assumed to increase your milk supply, but we don't have enough research to show that they do what people claim they do. So remember, food first approach, increase your nutrition, make sure you eat enough, make sure you fill your body with enough calories, make sure you, you fill your body with enough nutrients, okay? Because calories is important, but nutrients is also important. You eat nutrient dense food whilst filling your body with the calories that is needed for your body to produce the quality and the quantity of milk that your baby needs to sustain him or herself. So the next tip is hydration. This goes along with nutrition. You got to give your body the fluid to produce the milk. Milk is basically water. So the milk that you make and your baby feeds on it is basically water. So water mixed with a whole lot of nutrients, carbohydrates, and a bit of protein, some vitamins and minerals, and a bit of fat. My recommendation is to drink to thirst. If you're thirsty, please don't push it off. Drink water whilst you feel thirsty. Have a water bottle around in the house. You can put one in the kitchen, one at your nursing station, one where you, you sit and relax. You put water bottles or glass of water everywhere in the house and drink up. So wherever you sit to nurse your baby, 
there is water over there if you have a partner you can seek help from the partner and ask the partner to help you with passing over the water bottle to you and you drink up so whilst your baby is feeding that's the time you also remember to feed and drink Take sips during the day. Don't wait until you are very, very thirsty. And a good way to know whether you are really drinking enough is by the color of your urine. So if the color of your urine is bright yellow, that means you are probably not getting enough. A good sign to know that you are getting enough is when the color of your urine is very clear. But mind you, if you are taking your prenatal vitamins, Sometimes your prenatal vitamins, because some of the B vitamins causes your urine to be yellow, you might see your urine to be yellow all the time. Yeah, just remember to drink water, just remember to hydrate, and also remember that water is not the only fluid that you can um, hydrate yourself with. There are a whole bunch of fluid alternatives. If the taste of plain water is not a favorite of yours, coconut water is an excellent, excellent fluid that you can replenish your body to hydrate. There is tea, you can try um, herbal tea, but make sure that when you are trying herbal tea, those herbal teas are not something that would affect breast milk supply or would go into your breast milk to get to your baby. You can also make some fruit infusion, put some fruits like blackberries or strawberries or raspberries in plain water and then let it sit for a little bit and that would just sap out the flavor of the fruit into the water and you can just use a straw and drink and that makes it even more palatable and easy to drink. The option of soups, bone broth, drinking milk, all are great alternatives and you can as well try that, not only drinking water all day long. Another thing that can affect your milk supply is your stress level. So as new moms, we have a whole lot on our list. We have um, resting on our list. We have worry about whether we are making enough milk for the baby. We have to worry about how to change the baby's diaper, learn how to breastfeed, learn how to cook and be a wife if you are a wife and be a mother and be all of those things and be yourself as well. We have a whole lot to think about. And if you are a working mom, you have to start thinking about how you are going back to work and how breastfeeding is going to continue after you go back to work. All of those things are problems. And on top of all the unforeseen circumstances that come in our lives. So stress is inevitable, but we have to try as much as possible to reduce our stress level when we are new moms or when we are breastfeeding moms. If you are a breastfeeding mom and you have high stress level, chances are that your stress level is going to affect your milk supply. Stress and milk supply don't go hand in hand. They are two opposite things and they are rivals. So if you have high stress level, then your milk supply will be low. If you have low stress level, chances are that you're going to get a high milk supply. So if you try to reduce your stress level, just take it easy lower your expectation know that even if you are messing up even if nothing is going on well you are doing okay as far as your baby is doing well it's no issue that calls for any concern you are doing okay have grace for yourself seek help when you need help if somebody is around you ask for help tell them what to do Tell them how they can help you and try to get rest as much as possible. If the baby is sleeping, I know a lot of the times, me being a twin mom, I know that when my babies are sleeping, I really cannot sleep because I have a whole bunch to do in the house before they wake up. But sometimes I just forgo those things because those things are not humans. I am human and my babies are human too. But those things, the dishes, the cleaning of the house, all of those other stuff are not human. They can stay there and they can be there for as long as I want them to be. But as humans, my babies, they cannot just be there. They need, they need attention. They need to be 
cared for. They need to be tended for. Myself, I need to be cared for. I need to be tended for. I need to care for myself. So if I don't prioritize those times in and I pay attention to those things like the cooking and the dishes and all of that, that somebody else can do for me, then it's going to affect how the bonding that I bond with my baby and definitely is going to affect the milk supply. And that takes me to the next tip. The way you bond with your baby really, truly affects your milk supply. So when first you start to breastfeed, make sure that your baby is skin to skin, especially during the first days of life. If your baby is very, very new, make sure that you put the baby on your bare skin without bra, without hijab, with dress, on your chest so that all the love hormones that's called oxytocin can be released oxytocin is a hormone that signals the body that there is something going on there is a smooth peaceful encounter that is going on with the body other hormones would be signaled to put to start producing the milk it's a whole lot that goes on in milk production. It's not only you latching, it's not only you feeding frequently, it is the hormones. So if your hormones are not there, they are very scared because you have a lot of stress. And when you have stress, your body goes in fight or flight mode. So when your body goes in fight or flight mode, then that means the body does not invite anything peaceful. So it's always scared and um, it's not going to produce what is supposed to be producing for the baby. So make sure you focus on the baby. Look at your baby with a soft eye. Try to snuggle the baby. Try to just look at the baby eye to eye. You put the baby on skin to skin and all of that. That helps to release oxytocin. The more the oxytocin, the more the prolactin and the more the milk will be produced. Oxytocin gets released when there is natural and easy connection between you and your baby. Are you intentionally decreasing stress? If you are not, then you better try to find ways to intentionally decrease stress. This is all I have for you today. Inshallah, I hope this is helpful. And please don't forget to share this video. If you have any question, please don't forget to put it in the comment section below. And let me know if you are a new mom or you are still pregnant or this is your fourth or your fifth time so that I get to know my audience. If you are not subscribed yet, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and join the family. We will be happy to have you here. Have a look out for my next video about skin to skin and the first hour of birth. To hit the little notification bell to be notified for any future videos that I upload. Thank you very much Jazakumullah Khairan for being here and watching my video. I super super appreciate it. And until I see you next time, inshallah, be in the best of health and iman. Assalamu alaikum.